Do you worry about what your clients think of you? Even if you think not really, what you're going to learn today about what your brain thinks about them may surprise you. In this episode of Be a Better Lawyer, you're going to learn how your brain's thoughts about your clients may be negatively impacting how much money you make in your practice and how you feel every single day day. You're also going to learn what to do about it. All right, my friend, here are a few questions I want you to ask yourself right now. Have you ever felt annoyed with a client asking you questions? Have you ever thought your client should just do what you tell them to do and stop asking questions? Have you ever put off doing client work because you just didn't like them? Have you ever received an email from a client asking you when the work was going to be done, then you became angry or felt pressured to get things done? Have you ever done work beyond the scope of your client agreement, then you just didn't tell them that you did work outside your client agreement? Have you ever given a client a discount? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, keep listening because this episode will change how you think about your clients and about yourself. Because what's happening in these situations is that your brain is making judgments. Now, we all make judgments. That's what our brains do. We make a judgment about whether we should speed through a yellow light or slow down, or whether we should get the pizza or the salad or both. But when our brain makes judgments without us having awareness of them, We can make really bad decisions, decisions that can have repercussions for ourselves, our practice, and maybe even the client relationship. Judgment all happens in your brain. Judgments are simply thoughts. That means we need to look at what's going on inside of your brain instead of what you think is going on inside of your client's brain. In fact, getting to know your brain intimately is the only way you will ever feel better and more confident in your interactions and less angry and annoyed. It's going to improve your performance, including reducing procrastination, making faster decisions, saving you loads of time, since our judgments can waste time by creating a lot of rumination. It will improve your confidence in everything you do, and it will improve your relationship with your clients. In this episode, you're going to uncover what your subconscious thinks about your clients, or more accurately, what you think they think about you, and then help you clean up any problematic symptoms that may be showing up and negatively impacting your performance or the future of your practice. When your subconscious thoughts are made conscious, then you have the ability to make change. Before we dive in today, I want to ask you another question. Do you ever think it should be happening faster? Your practice should be growing faster. Your life should be getting easier, faster. You should be changing faster. If you said yes to any of those questions, I want to invite you to a strategy session with me to learn more about working with me one-on-one. We accelerate the process of change when we work together. So if you want to change your life and your practice faster, book a call with me. We'll talk about how we'll work together to achieve your goals. And by this time next week, you can get started making the changes you're looking for. You can book a strategy session with me at Dina Catal com forward slash strategy session. There's no pressure on these calls. We talk to help you get clarity on exactly what you want and whether or not us working together is a good fit for both of us. No matter whether we decide to work together or not, you will get something you needed to hear on that call. You can book a strategy session at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. Okay, let's get into this episode. When I was thinking about this episode, I discovered four common beliefs that lawyers have that negatively impact how they show up for their clients and their law practices. Three of these beliefs come directly from what they are thinking about their clients, and one of them is a belief that they think about almost everything in their lives daily. So as we go through these beliefs, I want you to just be paying attention uh, for what clicks with you, what you're seeing happening in your life. And I want you to make a promise to me. All right. This is important. If you see yourself in any of these, if you know you're thinking these thoughts, if you know you're behaving in any of the ways I'm describing, do not judge yourself. You are a normal human being who has a brain. 
all we are doing in this episode is bringing these hidden thoughts, these subconscious thoughts to light so they're not subconscious anymore, so that we have some awareness around them. But when we start doing that, we can feel some shame. We can tell ourselves, oh, I should have known better, or oh, I can't believe I do that, or oh my God, I'm a horrible person. None of that is allowed, my friend, okay? So if you notice these thoughts and feelings start coming up for you as we go through this training, remind yourself that there's nothing wrong with you. You're learning about your brain. You're learning about what your brain does automatically. And now that you know, you can start practice doing better. And it is a practice. We may return to the same old habits and that's okay. Just remind yourself of what you learned here or come back to this episode if you want a refresher. I also want you to know that there's like 1% of the human race who are working on things like mindset. So if you are here, you are part of a group of people who are really dedicated to knowing yourselves more. And I just want you to be really proud of yourself for that and really acknowledging yourself for that because most people aren't doing this work. And the impact of this work is massive. So if you're doing this work for yourself, you're going to have better relationships. You're going to be able to get paid commensurate with the value of your work because you're going to ask for that value. You will feel more confident saying no when you want to say no and asking for the value of your work when you say yes. You're going to stop avoiding contacting clients. You're going to stop procrastinating on client work. And you will plain feel better every single day. Oh, and you know what? You're going to save a ton of time because you won't be ruminating on how you should have behaved or how your client should have behaved. All right? So ready? Let's go. Here's four beliefs hurting your relationships with your clients. So belief number one, they don't think I'm a good attorney. So how do you know this might be you? How do you know you believe that, you know, they just don't think I'm a good attorney? Well, you find yourself doing work outside of the scope of your contract, and then you don't ask for more money to compensate for that work. You are essentially overworking to prove them wrong and gain their favor. Or instead of overworking, you actually find yourself procrastinating. You put off doing the work. If you think a bill is too old, right? It's just kind of the subjective too old. You don't send the bill out because you're afraid that they're going to think you're incompetent or that you're disorganized. You become upset when clients don't do what you tell them to do, um, like get a document for the work that you need to do. You consider firing a client because they're not behaving the way that you want them to, not, you know, being rude to you or being horrible to you or anything. But for example, they might mark up a document that you wrote for them or have questions about it. But rather than patiently answering questions, you get annoyed with them. If you get an email or a call from a client asking you when their work is going to be completed, you become annoyed and then you put off doing the work or getting back to them about it. You may even snap off an email that's a bit shorter with them than you'd meant it to be. So here's why that will be happening. You overwork, meaning exceed the scope of the contract that you initially explained to them because your brain thinks working proves your worth, right? Or you're telling yourself, oh my gosh, if I don't do this thing, they're going to think I'm incompetent, right? So you don't even explain that this is something that needed to get done and it wasn't communicated in the initial consult. You're focused on you and how you feel and not on problem solving your practice. So you don't go in to communicate and you don't think about how you might communicate in the future to clients in your consults to set up expectations. Your brain is hyper-focused on what you think they think about you instead of zooming out and problem solving. So you're thinking things like, they don't respect me. I should have done the work sooner. They're going to think I'm disorganized. I am disorganized. I deserve to get paid less because I was disorganized. So all of these thoughts come down to what you think about yourself, right? That you're not enough or you're not good enough. And they have nothing to do with what your client may actually think about you. So here's how your client experiences it. When they don't get documents to you that you've asked for, they don't understand why you're in a rush. They're not in a rush and they don't understand why you are. 
When you do work outside of the scope of contract, they have no clue what work is done or what you needed to do to make their case solid. They just assume you did what you were supposed to do as their attorney. They're not really thinking anything. They just think, oh, well, I just assume she's doing what we had agreed upon because it's done. When they have suggestions, they figure that that's what they're supposed to do, right? Some clients are more engaged than others. So the ones who are more engaged, maybe marking up a document or have questions or suggestions, they think that's what they're supposed to be doing. When you don't bill your client, your client doesn't have any closure to the case. And they might even think that you still represent them. When you put off communicating to the client about when work will be done, they feel confused and they don't know where they stand. In fact, if you're not setting expectations from the beginning of the relationship about when work will be done, they may be confused and they may be sending you emails. So here's the fix. Focus on your mindset and on problem solving in your practice. Because when you do, you can lead from service. You're focused on that. You're you're focused on them, right? You're focused on what they're experiencing versus what you are experiencing. When you problem solve, you can see things like, oh, I can understand why they might have an expectation that wasn't clearly made in the consult, right? I didn't actually set forth what date it, things were going to be done. So it makes sense that they would be asking me about this. You know, being able to understand them and be in their shoes is going to really help you have an understanding of what your client is going through. And then you can problem solve in your practice for those things that are frustrating. You fill yourself up in the relationship by reminding yourself of the reason they hired you. You know what you're doing. They feel comfortable with you. They want you to do their work. So I want you to recognize that there is a reason why they hired you and to remind yourself of that. All right, belief number two, I need to make sure they are happy at all costs. It's also kind of, um, I need to be perfect, right? That, that kind of flavor. And it's very much a good little girl syndrome that, that people pleasing coming through. So how do you know this is you? You do work outside of the scope of contract. You discount your rate without telling your clients in the bill. You discount your rate in the consult, even before they've said anything to you about their ability to pay. You say yes to client requests before looking at your calendar to see if agreeing to their requests makes sense to you. You say yes to requests without charging for the work you're going to be doing. You say yes to client requests, even if it means totally upending your life. And here is why that is happening. You may be worried that your client will be angry with you and is going to leave you a bad review, leave you, or not give you referrals. It's that fear of rejection. You may think that if you go above and beyond that they're going to really like you. This basically boils down to if I do X, they will like me. And if I don't do X, they're going to hate me. So here's how your client experiences it. When you do work outside of the scope of contract, they may assume that was part of the work you were supposed to do, right? They assume it's part of what you talked about. So don't expect extra kudos, okay? When you say yes to getting something done in a time frame that doesn't work for you, that's upending your life, they think they can ask for this all the time. That's because they assume that what they asked for was reasonable because you said yes, all right? So if you have clients who have, you have continuous relationships with, expect that they're always going to ask you to pull a rabbit out of the hat because you've trained them to believe that it is normal. Take note that it's going to be harder for you to say no in the future because you have trained them to think you will say yes eventually, even if you say no at first. So just know that this is something that could come up. When you discount your rate, they may not value your services. But even if they do, they will also tell all of their friends the rate that you gave them. And their friends are going to expect the discounted rate in the future. So you're setting yourself up for a problem with your future self. Hey, just know that that could be a possibility and that you're going to need to learn how to say no or stop giving discounts altogether so that way you don't have this situation coming up. Here's the fix. First of all, recognize that your clients didn't hire you so you can feel good about yourself, all right? They hired you because they believed you could help them with their problem. 
Second, and this is the opposite of what you need to do for a limiting belief number one or that, right? You actually need to focus more on what you want and recognize that what you want matters. So here's a couple tips. When you use a calendar, you can more easily say no to new commitments when it doesn't make sense for your schedule because you're just looking at your calendar and saying, no, I can't do it because, or you don't even have to give them a reason, but your calendar helps you with that. When you have set rates that make sense for the work that you do and you don't discount, you can state them simply. You're never confused about what you said last. You just have these very simple rates set out. And one thing this belief has in common with belief number one is that part of the fix is to feel uncomfortable emotions and do the hard things anyway. So for example, you say no, or I'll check my calendar and I'll get back to you when your reaction is usually to say yes. That takes practice. It takes taking a moment, taking a breath and saying no, taking a moment and saying I will take a look at my calendar and I will get back to you. It is a habit that you are now unlearning to say yes. So it's going to feel a little uncomfortable at first. Or when you notice yourself wanting to discount your rate to ask yourself, why are you doing this? And do you like your reasons? I find that most of the time my clients discount because they think they like should have done the work faster, right? I put that in quotes, should have done the work faster. So ask yourself this, think of an attorney you really respect, somebody who is really well regarded in the legal community you are in, would that attorney discount their rate for the same reason you're giving? Ask yourself why or why not? Because a lot of times we are simply guessing and we think that if we discount our rates, then the person will say yes, that they'll like me, right? They're going to say yes. And if I give them my real rate, then they're going to say no, right? They're not going to like me. So just recognize there might be a feeling in your body of rejection if you give your rate the way you want to give your rate. And that is the uncomfortable feeling that you will need to sit with and practice sitting with during a consult and giving your rate. All right. Belief number three, they're wasting my time. Okay. This is such a fascinating belief because you have literally decided how much your time and expertise is worth and then contracted with your clients around how much of that time and expertise you will devote to their case. But your brain says they are the ones wasting your time. Fascinating, right? So how do you know this is you? You feel agitated when your client writes you an email or calls you about their case. You put off doing client work for a client who asks you about casework deadlines. You find yourself complaining that your clients expect a lot from you, even if they just sent you an email, simply asking when they should expect the work to be done. Why is this happening? So it's happening because you're thinking, I don't have enough time or they're wasting my time. And if you think these, of course, you're going to feel pressure or overwhelm, which is going to cause you to be unfocused. It's also going to cause you to procrastinate on work. If you're feeling agitation around a certain client, you're not going to want to do work for that client. When we're not managing ourselves, then it makes a lot of sense that we're not able to manage client work. We're not able to manage time. So this is where mind management comes in. This is where it's up to you to really understand, oh, I'm the one causing this. It's not my client. It's going on inside of me. All right. So this is how your client experiences this. They have absolutely no clue that you're experiencing all this angst about their case. They just haven't received clear communication or they didn't understand something and they're trying to clear it up. That's what's going on. Here's the fix. There's a lot of fixes, but I'm just going to give you some questions to ask yourself as a starting point, because what this really comes down to is mind management and really that self-responsibility and understanding what you need to do differently in order to problem solve in your practice. So I'm going to ask you some questions here to help you problem solve for yourself. I highly encourage you to answer these questions. So one, I want you to just change your perspective for a moment and ask yourself why your client might be asking you this question. What about your previous interactions might have led them to have this question. 
Now, this is a really beautiful opportunity to ask yourself where you might not have set up adequate expectations in your relationship. I did an entire episode on this in Be a Better Lawyer number 292, and you can find the link in the show notes. The second thing I want you to think about is this. Is there a better way to manage your time? Are you using a calendar for more than just hearings and due dates? Are you following through with what you place on the calendar? Are you training your employees to properly route matters away from you? So this is something I work on in depth with my clients. This is really kind of the meat and potatoes of what we do because calendars seem like they would be simple enough but they're just not. And we have a lot of limiting beliefs about ourselves and our capabilities that get in the way of using them effectively, but they are the absolute most masterful tool to use to help you manage your mind around your client work. So these are just some things I want you to, to, I'm offering to you to think about. So belief number four is they don't value my work. Okay. I hear this a lot. So how do you know this is you? You feel obligated to discount your rate when someone asks you to. You may feel obligated to discount your rate because you think that your client or potential client thinks that the work shouldn't cost as much as you charge. You don't communicate to the client or potential client why your rate is what it is. In other words, you don't communicate the value of your work or if you do, you're defensive about it, right? You almost like you're spitting it out. Like, hey, you should know the value of my work. You don't ask for what you want because you kind of think it's pointless. All right, so here's why it's happening. Your brain assumes that when the client asks for certain work or says, you know, they think the rate you quote is quote unquote a lot, that it means that they don't value your work, which could be true, right? It might be true, but your brain This is what's important here. So come back to me if you've strayed. Your brain subconsciously agrees with them. So don't uh, like, so you don't lay out the value of your work. You don't market the value of your work to them. Because as you're you're a lawyer, so part of your work is to really show your, your client why what you do is valuable. Not in a defensive way. You're not, you don't have to prove anything. You're just explaining to them very forthrightly, like this is the result that you're going to get. This is why I do what I do because I know what I'm doing. So for example, and this comes up pretty commonly with lawyers, is a potential client may come up, may come in and say, hey, you know, I just want to make a couple changes to this estate plan. It should be really quick. And the brain says, oh my gosh, they think it's just a quick change and they're not going to value my work. And then you might discount your work even if they don't ask, instead of showing them the value of your work and why you do what you do. Here's what your client experience is. They assume that they're going to pay for any work that they ask you to do for them. I mean, most clients, right? I do say most. And they don't think you're going to do the work for free. If they do think that, then you don't want to work with them anyway. But let's also make clear that people generally don't understand the value of your work until you show them the value of your work. They don't know the importance of doing the job right. They don't understand how important it is that if you're putting your name on a piece of work, that you are going to face the repercussions if things are not done right. So if you know that a quick fix isn't going to be a quick fix because you need to review the entirety of the document, because if you make any changes, you're putting your name on it and you're attesting to it. Don't pretend to the client that it is. Talk to them, communicate to them, right? That's really the fix. Okay. But let me go more in depth than the fix. Manage your mind and manage the client expectations up front. There's no need to discount communicate what you do and why you do it, right? That's really what the fix is here. So we covered a lot in this episode. I want to wrap it up with a nice little bow. Does that sound good? So first, our fear of client judgment is never about the client. It's always about what we're thinking about ourselves, okay? It's all internal. Those thoughts can often be limiting beliefs around our capability, pleasing clients, or how much time we have. Second, when we notice which limiting belief is taking hold when it comes to a particular client or working on a particular client matter, we can figure out what we need to work on. If you lack belief in your capabilities, then the work is 
learning to notice when you're thinking about yourself over serving your clients. That's always so great is when you're feeling angst about a client, just to take a breath and say, okay, what does, let me take a breath here. <laughs> right. And am I serving the client or am I ruminating and worrying about how I feel? Okay. Like what, what's going on here? And am I also caring about what I want? right? Do, is there a want match between what I want to do and what I want to charge and what the client wants? If you recognize that you serve your clients too much and you're in people-pleasing territory, then you want to remind yourself that what you want matters. And if you don't believe that you have enough time to handle client matters, then the solution to that is to one, look at client questions from their perspective. Is it simply a question that needs an answer? right? To examine your ability to manage time effectively and seek help if you need it. And also consider the systems that you have in place, the expectations that you were setting forth that are causing this to come up. When you begin to recognize that fearing client judgment is more about what you're thinking about yourself, it becomes easier not to take interactions with clients personally. You can become more client service focused and you're just going to plain feel better. Finally, if you notice that you are assuming your client undervalues your work, make sure you are not agreeing with them and undervaluing your work too. Communicate clearly why you do what you do and charge the rate that makes sense for the services that you are completing. And if you noticed yourself nodding your head throughout this episode, book a strategy session with me. We can start uncovering the beliefs that are preventing you from accelerating your progress in your firm and in your life while taking away the stress and the overwhelm. You can book a call with me at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. That's all for today, my friend. And remember what you want matters and it's 100% within your power to make it happen.